Hey, welcome back to our final study in this section called The Lord Gives Wisdom. Today's application, so uh, the application from the preceding text is, you know, seek wisdom like silver, search for it like hidden treasure. And I remember that's what we're looking for. And so uh, I wanted to read a quote from Charles Spurgeon that says, Yes, dear friends, if you seek wisdom, you will see it displayed in all its greatness. Not in the firmness of the earth's foundations, not in the measured march of the clouds of the sky, nor in the perpetual motions of the waves of the sea, not in the vegetation with all its intricate forms of beauty, nor in the animal with its marvelous tissue of nerve and vein and sinew, nor even in man, the last, that last and loftiest work of the Creator. But turn inside and see this great sight, an incarnate God upon the cross, a substitute atoning for mortal guilt, a sacrifice sacrificing or satisfying, a sacrifice satisfying the vengeance of heaven and delivering the rebellious sinner. Here is essential wisdom, enthroned, crowned, and glorified. Admire you men of the earth. If you are not blind, and you who glory in your learning, bow your heads in reverence, and admit that all your skill could not have devised a gospel that is one so just to God and so safe to man. We need to do that. That's what we need to do. So that's what you, you can see. You can see some of God's wisdom and the things that He's made, and that's the point Spurgeon makes here. But if you want to see, if you if you seek wisdom, you will see it displayed in all its greatness. You will see it all its greatness displayed in Christ, the incarnate God on the cross. That's what you see. There it is. All of it. you see some hints of it in creation, but if you want to see it all, that's where you go. So we need to do that. We need to bow our heads. In reverence to God, we need to see the glory that He's placed there on the cross, and we've got to admit that none of our skill can devise what God has done. We can't come up with that. We have to submit ourselves to what God has said. And then number two, if we seek wisdom, God will not fail to give it. But why do we lack it? First, we don't ask, right? We don't have because we don't ask. That's what James told us. Same thing here in Proverbs. We're not calling out for it, then we're not going to get it. And then finally, we're not willing to learn, right? We're probably not willing to learn wisdom. Um, so if we're not willing to learn it, we're not willing to learn about Christ. If we're not willing to count everything else as loss for the knowledge of Christ. We're not going to get it. And so that's the problem. We, we just don't want to learn. Um, you know, we get older and we're like, hmm, um, I've learned enough. I know enough about Jesus. Do you really? No, you don't. That's probably one of the dumbest things to say. Because what are you going to be doing in heaven? You're going to say, well, I know enough about Jesus. Now I'm just going to hang out over here by myself. No. Uh, and then number three, we often are afraid to meet our failures. You know, we look at this idea of the upright, the integrity, and we're like, Psh, I'm not there. But we've got to remember that we, we will know the wisdom of God, right? We will know the fear of the Lord. We will know these things. That's because we know Christ and his righteousness. We will be righteous because his righteousness is on us. So we shouldn't use the fact that, you know, we still sin as a reason why we shouldn't get wisdom or why we're, um, why we're struggling to get wisdom. Um, it's not because... You're lacking something from God. It's because you're using your failures as a crutch to not actually study wisdom. You gotta study it. You gotta learn it. You gotta come to know it. And then finally, we're afraid what others might think, and that's probably the fear of man is the big thing, right? We don't want more wisdom of God. We don't want to live out the wisdom of God because we're afraid of other people, what they might think, what they might do, um, <clears throat> how they conceive. You know what we're doing, or how they look at us. They might think we're foolish, or or they probably think we're unwise for doing what God told us to do. So that's that's where we uh, end up lacking wisdom. And so we don't want to lack wisdom. 
We need to ask for it. We need to be willing to learn it. We need to, you know, understand that, yeah, we have failures, we have sins, but we need to repent of those. And then we need to get over the fear of man. We got to stop caring what other people think, even other Christians. We got to stop thinking what they think. We need to think what God thinks. And go to the source of all wisdom, who is Jesus Christ. A lot of people out there, a lot of people making their comments and opinions being made known, there's no wisdom in them, though. It's just foolishness. The only wisdom that we can go is if we can support. If we have wisdom, it has to be from the Word of God. Because people are going all kinds of other places, looking at all kinds of other things. But they're not finding it in the Word of God. So if you can't point to you know chapter and verse and say, well, here it is. This is exactly what it says. Then, you know, stop making stuff up. Because a lot of people are making stuff up, right? And they say, well, this is wisdom. Sorry. It ain't wisdom. It's what you made up yourself. So that's the end of our study for this week. Uh, come back uh, next time. We'll continue on in Proverbs chapter 2.